Well, everyone, it's time for us to go ahead and take a look at the M2 Pro MacBook Pro that just came out and compare it against the M2 MacBook Air that came out a little bit later last year. Now, for first of all, I mean, if you have all the money in the world, then go for the MacBook Pro. But the MacBook Air, I think, is a very decent deal for this specific one. I think the M1 MacBook Air might be better, but let's go and see which one is the better one for you. Now, if you want to pick up one of these phones in the, you know, Amazon, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off with the outside of both of these, I would definitely say the design is more similar than not. You are definitely getting an overall thicker MacBook on the MacBook Pro, but it's kind of expected because you are getting a little bit more of a machine from that specific MacBook. However, on the flip side, you are getting more colors on the MacBook Air that you can choose from than on the MacBook Pro. There's four different colors to choose from on the MacBook Air. The MacBook Pro only gives you two different colors. So that's kind of an interesting thing to keep in mind at the end of the day. Price tag wise, there's also a pretty big difference. It's $1,199 to get the base MacBook Air, but to get the base MacBook Pro, it is $1,999. So there's a pretty big sub substantial difference there as well. And there's also a big substantial difference with the amount of storage and the base configuration of both these models. To start off, I mean, the base MacBook Air has 8 gigabytes of RAM with 256 gigabytes of storage. You are theoretically getting twice those, you know, numbers on the MacBook Pro. So you are getting 16 gigabytes of unified memory on the MacBook Pro with 512 gigabytes of storage. So you are getting twice the amount of that on the base configurations. So yeah, the MacBook Pro costs more money, but just from the jump, just from this first you know base model, you're getting twice the amount of RAM and storage without having to configure anything compared to the MacBook Air to the MacBook Pro. So definitely, definitely keep that in mind. I don't want to just say that MacBook Air is like so much of a better deal without kind of laying down the groundwork first. Now, with that being said, so with the exterior, like I said, there's not too many differences here. With the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, they both have very similar styling, but the MacBook Air gives me more of like this matte texture to it, and I think it looks really good depending on the color that you get. With the MacBook Pro, it's more, I guess, like aluminum based. Like, I don't know that they're both aluminum, but I feel like the MacBook Pro feels a little bit more like an older styling of MacBook Pro, where the MacBook Air feels a little bit more different. Like, I don't know the best way to describe it, but it still feels very, very premium. Now, the thinness and thickness is crazy because the MacBook Air is a much thinner MacBook MacBook than the MacBook Pro. So because of that, you know, it's just one of those things with MacBook Airs. It is it is a very, very lightweight machine and it's and it feels very good. Like I like that a lot. So this thing, if you're a traveler, like if you travel a lot for work or you go places a lot or whatever the case is, well, you can go and carry this MacBook Air around with you and feel like you're not even carrying that much stuff with you. But I will tell you, in my experience of owning a M M1 Pro MacBook, that's pretty much the same thing as this in terms of like the weight and everything, this MacBook feels very slim as well. It's a thicker MacBook than the MacBook Air, but either way, I haven't really complained too much about using this MacBook because it's too big. Like, it's not a 16-inch MacBook. Unless you're getting the 16-inch MacBook, then that's going to be a completely different story. But if you're getting the 14-inch one and comparing it to the base MacBook Air, you're going to be perfectly fine. Now, on the port situation, there is a pretty big difference on the ports. So with the MacBook Air, you're getting three ports technically, but maybe more if you kind of think about it. So with the MacBook Air, you're getting two Thunderbolt 4 ports. So you're getting, you know, basically the ability of charging with one, you know, specific port or using the other one as something else. But you also have the MagSafe capability on this MacBook as well, which is really cool. So you can go ahead and charge up that MacBook via the MagSafe charger and that kind of frees up an extra port. So you can do something else with the extra port if you want to. However, I will tell you with the MacBook Pro, you are getting substantially more ports here, which is probably one of the main reasons why I would pick up a MacBook Pro over the MacBook Air. You are getting three Thunderbolt 4 ports. Now I'm going to pause right there. A really good thing that I like about these MacBook Pros is that there's a Thunderbolt 4 port on each side of the MacBook. With the MacBook Air, it's only there on one side. So if you're just plugging it into your monitor and just going from there, or you're not, you're not really worried about it, then it doesn't matter. But from after owning the M1 MacBook Pro for a while, I do kind of like having a USB-C port on both sides because it free, it just feels like I can charge on one side and do something else on the other. And I just like that so much more. So it's kind of like a minor thing. You have an HDMI port on the M1 Pro MacBook. And this is the big thing. You have an SD card slot on the M1 Pro MacBook Pro or the M2 Pro MacBook Pro as well. These are some of my favorite ports to have because you can just quickly just, you don't have to carry a dongle with you or anything. You can just slide in your memory card and move on from there. By far one of the most important things that I love about these MacBooks, the MacBook Air is great. 
Unfortunately, it only has two ports technically. So you have to keep that in mind. And if you're not planning on using any of those other ports, then it doesn't really matter. But if you are, then that's probably one massive thing to keep in mind here. So in terms of that, that kind of covers up the exterior. Now opening these things up, we do have a little bit of a difference in the display. So the MacBook Air has a 13.6 inch liquid retina display, where the MacBook Pro has a 14.2 inch liquid retina XDR display. So with the displays, there's some big differences here too. For one, the MacBook Pro's display is bigger. They're both a retina display, so the resolution is pretty good, but you are getting a ProMotion 120Hz display on the MacBook Pro, and it is a pretty big difference than a 60Hz display like we have on the MacBook Air. Again, I don't know if this would be the one reason I would go and upgrade, but with the mixture of this and, you know, the port selection already and the bigger display, like, that'd probably be one reason I would go and upgrade or several reasons why I would upgrade before even touching the performance right there. So I like the display on the MacBook Air. I think it's great, but I think the MacBook Pro's display is very good. They both have notches, so it's not even that big of a difference there, but that is one thing to keep in mind as well. Now, another thing I want to throw in here on the performance side is that if we are talking about the configurability of both these MacBooks, you can configure a MacBook Pro a lot more than a MacBook Air, meaning that you can configure the CPU, GPU, the memory, the RAM, all that stuff. With the MacBook Air, you cannot configure the CPU. You can still configure everything else, but the CPU cannot be configured. So if that is a big deal to you, then again, that's one thing to keep in mind. But with the MacBook Air, we can go up to eight core CPU, up to 10 core GPU, up to 24 gigabytes of memory, and up to two terabytes of storage. With the MacBook Pro, you can get up to 12 core CPU, you can get up to 38 core GPU compared to the 10 core CPU on the MacBook Air. It can get up to 96 gigabytes of memory where the MacBook Air only went up to 24 gigs and up to eight terabytes of storage on the MacBook Pro. So just right there is, I mean, those are massive differences. Now, obviously the more you spec it out, the more expensive it's going to cost. So keep that in mind. But if you are on a budget constraint, the MacBook Air may make more sense. But if you're not and you're looking for the most powerful machine in the most portable way, man, the MacBook Pro is, it's just a faster machine no matter what you do with it, you know? And you can get the M2 Max chip if you want and the M2 Pro comes in the base model. The MacBook Air comes with the M2 chip, which is fine but you are getting a little bit more configurability and a lot more speed depending on the configuration on the MacBook Pro than the MacBook Air. Now on top of that, I want to throw the battery life in here as well because it is a pretty big thing and just from Apple's own website, from their own mouth, they say both of these MacBooks can get up to 18 hours of battery life. Now that is probably going to be the most accurate testing we can get considering these are Apple products. I'm surprised they don't say the MacBook Air gives you better battery life, but with the MacBook Pro, this MacBook, I haven't really complained about the battery life too much, even when the M1 Pro one, like it's been very solid and I think that's just another advantage of buying an M1 M2 or whichever MacBook Pro that you want to get at this point. And to kind of sum up this whole entire video, what I'd probably tell you is that you can't really go wrong with either one of these MacBooks. I think both of them are great. They both have a lot of capability and they're going to be here for a long period of time. My only fear with something like a MacBook Air though is that you end up buying that MacBook and then you end up seeing how much better of a machine the you know M2 Pro MacBooks are and you end up switching and upgrading to those specific MacBooks. But if you're not one of those people who you know is like that, I'm kind of like not like that either, then you might be perfectly fine of getting a MacBook Air. I think for a majority of people watching this video, a MacBook Air is more than enough power, but if you need more power, and I would say more specifically, if you need more ports like I do, and just like not like carrying a dongle, the MacBook Pro might be the better option for you. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.